This is the basic relay circuit. This circuit is commonly used to turn relays on and off. It is used with relays that have a DC coil such as this one that's rated for 12 volts DC. This circuit uses a single transistor. This is a single stage basic relay driver that uses a single transistor that is set up as an on off switch. In fact, this transistor is called a low side switch. The reason it's called a low side switch is because it takes one side of the relay and pulls it down to ground. When it pulls this side of the relay to ground, this becomes zero volts. When zero volts is here and 12 volts is there, you've got 12 volts across the relay. When this transistor opens up and acts like an open switch, then this goes back up to 12 volts because of the resistance in the relay coil. And when this is 12 and that's 12, you've got zero volts across the relay and the relay shuts off. So this relay driver circuit is a DC circuit because this is a DC relay. doesn't matter what these contacts here on the other side of the relay are, are used for. That is in a completely different circuit. The relay driver circuit is a DC circuit. In fact, the resistance of this relay here, resistance of that coil, dictates how much current goes through this relay coil and how much goes through the transistor. The fact that this relay coil is also an inductor is irrelevant to the circuit other than the presence of this diode right here which is used to capture the inductive spike that is created when this relay coil when this relay is turned off and de-energized. So three commonly used modes of this type of a transistor, this, which is a bipolar junction transistor, like this 2N3904 general purpose transistor here. The three common modes are cutoff, then you've got saturation, and then you've got the active mode. So three commonly used modes of this type of a transistor, this, which is a bipolar junction transistor, like this 2N3904 general purpose transistor here. The three common modes are cutoff, then you've got saturation, and then you've got the active mode. Cutoff is when this transistor acts as an open switch. When that happens, there will be no current flowing through the relay and it will have zero volts across it. And there will be 12 volts at the bottom of the relay because there's nothing pulling it down to ground. Saturation is when this acts as a closed switch. When that happens, you've got zero volts here, you've got 12 volts there, you've got current flowing through the coil and through the transistor. This is DC current, not AC current. And the relay is energized. The active region is not used in this configuration. You will find the active region of the transistor used when it's used as an amplifier, such as an audio amplifier or an op amp or other, amp other applications where you're going to need a collector current that is proportional to the base current. That active mode will not be used in this circuit because it's not suitable for use as an on-off switch. So this circuit takes 5 volts from the microcontroller and uses that to switch this transistor on and off. You cannot control this relay directly from a microcontroller because this relay requires too much current and too much voltage, both of which are beyond the capability of a typical microcontroller port. So in this video, we'll show how to calculate this resistor value, and then we'll go ahead and hook it up, and then test it out and check the current here and check the current there and make sure it's all working properly and do a little demo. If you'd like to build this circuit, here is the parts list. 
So how you would calculate the component values here would be, well, first you would select a transistor. This is a general purpose transistor. The 2N3904 is a very good transistor for driving relays that are, such as this one, that are 100 milliamps or less. So in the voltage of this transistor, the breakdown voltage is something like 60 volts. So this is a very good transistor, the 2N3904, for this configuration. This is a single stage relay driver circuit where the microcontroller here, which can only put out five volts and cannot drive the relay on its own, relies on this transistor to translate that into 12 volts for the relay. So what happens here is when you wanna turn the relay on, this five volts from the microcontroller port goes high to five volts and this current limiting resistor drops it down to 0.7 volts right here and which is what is needed to forward bias what is essentially a, 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 a PN junction here uh, at 0.7 volts. Once that happens, this transistor starts to conduct and current can flow through this transistor uh, and energize this relay. So how would you know what value of resistor to use here? Well, there's a rule. Uh, every transistor has a parameter called beta, which is also the gain. And we know that the current going through this is going to be 12 volts divided by the resistance of the relay. And that is going to be 33 milliamps. That is what should be flowing through that relay when there's 12 volts across it. That current is going to dictate the value of this resistor right here. How does it dictate that? A rule here is you want to take that current, divide it by the beta, which is against this transistor, and that's going to give you 0.825 milliamps. So if you have 33 milliamps and the gain of the typical gain of this transistor is 200. So if you were to take this and divide it by 200 and then multiply it times 5, that's going to give you 0.825 milliamps, which is how much current you need flowing into the base of this transistor to produce 33 milliamps here. But that is actually just, that is actually treating it as an amplifier, not in saturation. That is just enough to give this, cause this to have 33 milliamps flowing through it. So what you want to do, you want to drive this into saturation by multiplying the current by a factor of between, I, I use between two and five, I use five. So five, by using five, then uh, using five times more current necessary to allow 33 milliamps to pass through here, you are ensuring that this transistor is in saturation and uses a switch. So the formula would be then, would be this divided by the beta, which gives you, and then you multiply it times five, and that gives you 0.825 milliamps. So that means we need 0.825 milliamps flowing this way in order to force this transistor well into saturation and turn this relay on. So in order to have 0.825 milliamps, it's really easy to calculate this resistor value because we know we have 5 volts here and we know we have 0.7 volts here. 0.7 volts there is needed to forward bias this junction. So that leaves us with 4.3 volts Across this resistor. Now we could just use Ohm's law. We have 4.3 volts divided by 825 milliamps, which is 0 0.000825. That gives us 5212 ohms, 5212 ohms. A fairly close standard value is 5100 ohms. That's a 5.1k resistor. So, in using this circuit here, with these values, we have designed ourselves a relay circuit, and that is what we have here. And this will be demonstrated on the on this breadboard. So this is a breadboarded single stage circuit. Here you have your driver transistor. Here, your base resistor right there, and this is your relay uh, with your flyback diode. That flyback diode again is uh, to dampen the voltage spike that is generated when this coil collapses, when the relay is, turns off, is shut off by this transistor. So the resistance of this relay here dictates the current going through here and through the collector of this transistor. It also dictates what value of resistor that you are going to select in the uh, calculations for this. 
So if I press this button right here, this will simulate the 5 volts from the microcontroller here going high. All right, so, and as you can see, we got 0.82 milliamps flowing through that resistor to the base of this transistor. Through the relay coil, we have 32 milliamps, which is about what we would expect because it's a 12 volt relay and 365 ohms. That comes out to around that. Now the voltage across this transistor right here, the voltage from here to here should be close to zero volts because by definition, this is a switch. The intent is that this is a switch and that we should have close to 12 volts across that relay. So press that button there. I'm just going to go ahead and bypass the switch so that it just stays on. There we go. So I've already got one side of this multimeter here connected to ground. And then this is the underside, which is the top of that transistor. So from emitter to collector, we've got 0.163 volts, which is really low. It's almost zero volts, which gives us about 12 volts across that relay, just about 12 volts, which is good. Uh, one of the things about this circuit here, this is a, a really basic circuit. You actually see this on a lot of appliance uh, control boards, HVAC control boards, and a lot of other applications. It's simple. It's called a low side switch. So the underside of this uh, relay is, is basically brought low. It's like a current sink. Uh, the disadvantage, one of the disadvantages of this is that the relay actually doesn't share a common ground with the rest of the circuit. There are advantages of the relay actually sharing a common ground. Another disadvantage, uh, the one that I see most of this circuit, is that this uh, if this flyback diode here shorts out, which they do, uh, you've got essentially 12 volts with zero ohms uh, when this transistor turns on. So it's likely going to short this transistor out. When that shorts out, you could have a collector to a base short. You could have 12 volts right here, which means that a microcontroller is going to see 12 volts, which it, most microcontrollers can't tolerate. So it could easily burn that microcontroller out. So that's why I like the dual stage circuit uh, a little better. Now, as far as the gain of this circuit here, this is, the gain of this circuit is going to be less than a dual stage. We just have a single amplification stage. But um, based on the value of this resistor here, remember we, uh, we chose a, a lower value than we actually needed to drive this into saturation. We wanted to push it hard into saturation. So the actual gain of the circuit is going to be less uh, you can make that resistor even lower, but there's an advantage of going too low because a disadvantage of going too low because you're going to have too much current flowing through here and it wastes energy and you could also uh, draw more current from the microcontroller than what you what you're supposed to. So the current going through this resistor here is 0.82 milliamps. That's the current needed to switch this transistor on and you've got 30.71 milliamps there. So the gain of this circuit comes out to about 38.5. But then if you multiply that gain times the, the effective gain of this uh, relay added to it, because this relay can control 30 amps, it's much, much higher than that, but, but not anywhere near as high as a dual stage circuit. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. For more information about this project, as well as recommended breadboarding equipment, best practices, and safety tips, please go to breadboardcircuits.com.